Dave Fornell, the editor of Imaging Technology News and Diagnostic and Interventional Cardiology Magazines. I'm here at RSNA 2014 in Chicago, and I have with me Chrissy Hall Reichert. She's the Director of Information Technology at Centera Health in Virginia Beach, Virginia, and she's in charge of cardiovascular IT. And it's my understanding right now that you're going through a process to look for a new CBIS system, and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, that process that you guys have gone through and uh, what you really think is needed for you know, your peers out there that are looking to buy a new system. Absolutely. Um, I think the first thing that we did and the best thing any organization can do is to stop and take stock of what you have. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of misconceptions within the service line itself on what we have, what it does, what it doesn't do, and with the standardization of workflows. So we spent a significant amount of time this year, probably a good eight months, in documenting every piece of imaging equipment related to cardiology, every application, and there are a lot, every workflow in every subspecialty, and got a comprehensive look of where our areas of opportunities were so we knew exactly what we're trying to solve. We thought we knew. It wasn't until we went through that process that we really had clear data that said this is what we need to do. And when you went through the checklist, what sort of subspecialties did you have? We went through um, EP, ECG management, echo, stress, nuclear, um, pretty much everything in cardiology. We have a very large organization and, and full offerings within the, the service line. Of course, not every hospital does everything. And even though the standard, the technologies are mostly standardized, they're still not even following the same workflows. There's still a, a need to hold on to some paper-based or some manual logs, even though it's not really necessary. So it was very eye-opening that they're not standardized now, even though their technologies are. And then, of course, we have some new hospitals to the organization who have a completely different set of technologies whose strategic plans have been put on hold waiting for us to figure out what we're going to do as an enterprise. You're also trying to bring in your vascular department into cardiovascular as well. We are. Um, our senior vice president, who's responsible for both service lines, has has stated like that cardiac and vascular have to be in lockstep, that we can't have separate solutions. And so we've just completed cardiology. The goal is to do vascular in the first half of 2015 and then begin the, ro the robust RFP development in mid of 2015. And how did you get uh, some of your departments, EP or vascular, or your other specialty departments to come in and uh, gather input for what they needed out of an IT system? Uh, Ascendian Healthcare was engaged with us and drove a lot of that process, but it was interviews with hundreds of staff and physicians and clinicians. They had some great templates, observed workflows and procedures in every facility, and did a lot of data collection before they got here. So we spent probably a good two months collecting modality information, model information, um, absolutely everything, so they can come in and get a sense of what our end users thought of the products, where they were happy, where they weren't happy, where they thought we had areas of opportunity opportunity and brought it all together. Got all the physicians on board, went to all their various committees and got them excited that Sintero is trying to solve their problem, that we needed to come up with a roadmap. The SEVIS technologies have been historically fairly immature and they're starting to reach a level of maturity that an organization like ours are, is now interested, that we needed to get away from best of breed. There's a lot of frustration with the physicians having to log in to six, seven, eight different applications. You know, in 2010, we had 23. In 2014, we're down to 12, but it's still too many. So you had mentioned how uh, CVIS has changed, and you're currently here at RSNA, and you're looking at uh, several of the vendors for CVIS. Yes. Uh, what have you seen as kind of a fundamental shift in how CVS is uh, presented, and uh, can you talk a little bit about your enterprise imaging approach? I think the CVIS of the past was very narrowed in ECHO, uh, primarily, and CATH. They really didn't branch out into the other subspecialties where maybe fine for a smaller facility that doesn't do a lot of uh, work outside of those areas or doesn't have an EP shop. But it was just too limited. We weren't. We were still going to have to support too many disparate systems. What we're seeing now is the vendors are more interested in creating the unilateral picture of a cardiac patient. They're not all doing it the same way, which is fine. You have some that have mature product offerings in the cath lab or an echo or an ECG management or all these subspecialties, and their answer is to create a new product that lays on top of them that requires you to have a mature infrastructure already and then feeds and collates all that into one place. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of them are doing that. There are a couple out there that are taking a completely different approach, which 
I think is the right direction is our ability to take down all of these different systems and truly have one workspace for the cardiologists and also feed that information into the EMR and into the data analytics because right now if a patient comes into the emergency department, goes to the cath lab, goes to surgery, goes to ICU, goes a step down, gets discharged to home care, and then sees their doctor, I can tell you what happened in the cath lab. That patient deserves to know what happened holistically throughout their care and their ongoing care. The case managers need to know that information. The surgeons need to see that information. And CVISs are still falling short where they're taking you up to all the cardiology end to end, but we're still not seeing the front end, the back end, and the whole picture. And so any offering is going to need to easily feed in to whether it's a data warehouse, an EMR, or any analytic component with discrete data. And there's some that are, are starting to see that and get there. And one of the trends that we're seeing in the market is uh, really kind of a, an advance towards enterprise imaging, uh, usually leveraging some sort of a VNA. Mm -hmm. And that way you could have multiple departments, including cardiology or radiology, dump into a central archive. And then you could uh, connect that to your EMR for a uh, as a central portal to pull information and images and reports and it sounds like that's the road you're going down? That is the road I want to go down. Uh, we have at Centera just completed the purchase and test installation of a VNA. Mm -hmm. I've gone with Mach 7 and the client Outlook eUnity viewer and interestingly after a couple of my demos yesterday I'm starting to question why a CPAX is even necessary. Mm -hmm. It's truly the loops and the cardiac measurement tools which the VNA products have or they're starting to develop so I'm hoping that the direction we go in isn't VNA plus a CPAX it's truly integrated the imaging the desktop integration with the structured reporting in the CVIS comes and feeds directly from the VNA and there is no middle lane not only will it be cleaner I and mean, it'll be more cost effective for my organization it has everything in one place and it just it seems to be the cleanest solution and and that is part of my goal for today is to go back and talk to them all and say why do i need your CPAPs? i'm not seeing why i need that what do you think uh the overall response would be from your uh, end users <laughs> i think they would be i think my end users are, are so eager to have something mm -hmm. and we're lucky that our IT department has a very good relationship with um, our customer base so I think if I told them to trust me and hang on a little bit that they'll, they'll do it. I think overall though you're right, I think there is a historical desire to think you need that. Mm -hmm. Just like when we went to EMRs and went paperless and people held on to that and right. still sometimes do. I think that's going to be the same thing. I think it is getting them to see it, getting them to play with it, having vendors that are willing to open up their tests or training environments and let our cardiologists play because most of them that I've seen, especially in the VNA space, are, are eager to understand what our workflows are and develop those tool sets, which again gets me to why do I need a CPAX. The CVIS is where I think the energy needs to be, that's where the structured reporting is going to be because as you know right now structured reporting is really only well adopted in ECHO, not mm -hmm. CAF, but we need to get there. When we have registry reporting information, we have population health management we need to feed, we can't, we can't do that with what we have today. Right. Uh, and with stage two meaningful use and with healthcare reform uh, being driven by IT, mm -hmm. uh, it seems that increasingly you're going to have to have the, the keyword interoperability and uh, everything's going to be driven by interoperability which is the number one one thing I hear over and over again mm -hmm. that people just can't achieve through their existing uh, systems. Uh, how is this going to help you achieve that? It depends on how the EMR players do in a CVIS capacity. I mean, we have our historic CV, you know, the AGFAs, the Fujis, and they are tried and true. They have to be able to play well with the Epics and the Cerners and the Meditex in order for that to be achievable. And it is kludgy right now. It's very difficult to truck that data out of our cardiac systems and into our meaningful use certified platforms because generally organizations aren't getting meaningful use certification for every single application. It's usually on the EMR right. side. So that has been a challenge where it's suddenly, oh my gosh, we have to catch the EF and put it in all the systems, but I catch it in three different systems today and one of them is very easy to interface that information discreetly, but the rest aren't because, oh, my doctor's still dictating. So there's, it's going to depend on how, how well they engage with the EMR companies or how, if the EMR companies start getting into the CBIS game. Well, thank you very much, and I wish you luck on your project. Thank you very much. It was nice meeting you. <laughs>